is it my uh, uh, I'm not sure whether it's my internet connection or there's something wrong with Google hmm Uh, Google is a bit slow today. Oh, Jeremiah is here. Okay, who else? Mm. I is Wong here. Oh, Solomon is here. Wong Zisheng is here. How about the other? Oh, the other Wong is also here. <laughs> ah, okay. Let, let me double check first. Huh? I I didn't get Jeremiah uh email address. Hang on, uh, hang on, uh, Jeremiah. I'm going to invite you. Um, let me go into intranet first. So since we have two wongs already. <laughs> Uh, I guess I cannot call Wong Wong. I'll start calling you Solomon now. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Intranet cost timetable. Um, attendance. Today is... Oh, belum lagi. Oh, I really thought that. Uh, I really thought that I forgot to invite you. Yeah, belum ada. Eh, tunggu. Ah. Jeremiah. Jer oh, yeah, memang beda. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, you're early. You're very excited. Uh, Jeremiah, um, have you received the offer? Of a letter. Uh, I need to show you all my. Oh, I think Google, there's something wrong with Google. Oh no, uh, it's not responding. I uh, do. I need to refresh. Okay, let me get back. My Google. Uh, I wanted to go to my Google Classroom. Just now I wanted to join the Midpoon, like forever waiting. Uh, now it's like waiting for Play Google. What's wrong with Google? Never mind, while waiting for that. Oh, Jeremiah belum dapat offer letter lagi lah. Oh, oh, so when did you um, submit the application page, uh, everything? Today is it or earlier this week, Jeremiah? Oh, baru confirm yesterday. <laughs> so this is your first class and you don't want to like catch up too many things, uh huh? <laughs> yeah, masuk saja. I'm okay, even though your name is currently not my attendance. Yeah, masuk saja. Oh, uh, oh, this is not good. Hmm. Uh, I cannot show you, you guys my Google Classroom. It's not opening. Hmm. What should I do? But it's okay. I have my quizzes. Uh, okay. Um, Wong, can you, oh, Wong and Jeremiah, can both of you like uh, turn on your camera for a while and introduce yourself to your, uh, to your classmate, especially Jeremiah? I 
Okay. Okay. I'm still waiting for my Google. Why is it not responding? Yeah. Do you have problem with your Google too? Or perhaps I try to open a new tab. Waiting for the rest. And at least I'm already in the middle. Oh, boleh, 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 boleh. Oh, I'm in already. It's like it's not responding. Hmm. Am I the only one having this problem or uh, you're, you're uh, okay? No problem. Ah, is it my... My data. How about I change to my DG? But today is sunny. It's not even cloudy. <laughs> Cannot even display my Google Drive. <laughs> hmm, this is too bad. Let's see. But I guess um, uh, Nathan has already extended to Wong. All right. Uh, thank you so much, yeah, Nathan, <laughs> for helping out. Uh, siapa lagi? Uh, oh, Jonathan, you completed three weeks worth of practical in half a day. Excellent. <laughs> you join right after doing your house chore. Okay, and then you complete everything by midnight. Okay. Um, and then Nathan... Oh, Nathan, you, it, it took you like two days only to complete everything. Oh, okay, okay. I think Wong is ready. Let me stop presenting. Oh, now I remember what you look like. <laughs> yeah, hi, Miss. Hi. <laughs> The other day, you know, um, Nathan, he said, oh, uh, Bong is coming. Bong, who, who is Bong? Bong is a sit, a sit, always sit at the back. There's no Bong in my class. Oh, Wong pula. Okay, now I remember you. Now I remember you. Okay, Jeremiah, uh, it's a bit too dark. Can I see you? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I think I remember you also, your face. Oh, you, you all still look the same. Wow, this power of um, um, young people. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, how about uh, starting from Wong, introduce yourself a bit and followed by Jeremiah, and then you can, uh, you can switch off your camera. I'm Wong How, yeah. I think that's it. Have you introduced yourself um in the uh other classes? God, I think one one only. Ah, uh. uh, one um whose class? Uh, whose class? Uh? Miss Sue, I think. Miss oh, Miss Rayani. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Your your PL uh, for software engineering. Yep. Okay, does she remembers you? Yeah, we had class last sem. Ah, last semester. Yep. Okay. How good is your programming? Uh, okay, okay. Uh. Is it getting much better? Maybe. Because <laughs> I remembered for my PCD one, um, you're above average, I believe. What did you get for your PCD? A? PCD? Ah, PCD. Forgot. Forgot. <laughs> 
yeah, it's okay because um, that's your first year, first semester, and then um, I think that's the only course that I teach your batch, right? Yeah. Okay. Where are you staying now? Uh, at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kolombong. Yeah. Oh, Kolombong area. Kolombong yeah. area. Okay. Uh, where is your previous school? Previous school, like secondary or? Are you secondary? Yes. Oh, uh, Maktab National. Oh, Maktab National. Anyone from Maktab National here? Tak ada. <laughs> okay, thanks, Wang. Oh, Wong, you don't have any English name, right? I always uh, call you Wong. Have. Yep. Kan? And then the other Wong, I also call him Wong. Uh, and then both Wong also sit at the back at lab 2 1A. <laughs> What a coincidence. <laughs> I have two Wong sitting at the same place. You know where's your place at lab one uh, two one A uh, at the back there? Yeah, the most back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, remember. the most back. Yeah. Uh um your senior also sit at the same place. Uh I guess all the Wongs um uh are attracted to that particular space in the lab. Okay, thanks, Wong. Jeremiah, talk to us. Yo, I was super new. I'm not yet in my attendance list student. <laughs> Once I get your your um uh, oh, what do you call that? Your name has been added. I will I will send you the invites, uh huh? Okay, Jeremiah, introduce yourself. Uh, what makes you join the uh, this first class today instead of like waiting to get the official offer? Who's friend? <laughs> Which friend? Nathan, Nathan, thanks so much. <laughs> okay, um, where are you staying at the moment? Um, at Luyang. Ah, Luyang. How's how's your programming? Um, okay, okay, also lah. Uh, if I remember well, you, you have shown lots of uh, potential during my class as well. And one thing uh, is that your handwriting yang besar-besar, bulat-bulat and like macam Calibri punya font style tu ka? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, then confirm that's you. Okay, I remember that. <laughs> okay, welcome Jeremiah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, Wong, he has already completed two practical exercises. I think I checked his submission on Sunday. That's good, Wong. So you can continue with the third practical. Uh, Jeremiah, um, I, I still need to send you invites to our classroom. Yeah, satu lagi kan, Wong? Okay, excellent. That shows that your programming is there already. There's no problem for you to um, uh, catch up. Excellent. Oh no, look at my Google. Um, what should I do? Should I like uh, leave and, and then restart everything? See, I refresh my tab. Uh -huh. <laughs> cannot display anything. My email, my classroom. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Okay, what's the time now? It's already almost nine seventeen. Uh, okay la. I'll I'll just I'll just. Close this Google Classroom. Okay. Ta da! <laughs> Let's do this, Chris. So, for Jeremiah, you can like uh, take a guess. Okay, you just join, uh, join in the fun. 
Okay, this is a gamified quiz for chapter three on event-driven programming. I believe you, you all have learned about uh, event-driven programming before this. Okay, as for Wong, yeah, you can take a guess as well. Uh, okay, let me click this, make it easy for you and put it in the chat box. Okay. Now I'm waiting for participant to join. Ah, I don't know that one is which one. I guess the other one will use uh, uh, Solomon. Okay, Solomon. Kevin is in, Dim is in, Russell, Noel is in, is, is Farrah here? Oh, Celine is in. Oh, Wong Tu. Who's Wong Tu? Oh, you. Okay, la. Uh, in that case, yeah, because I'm so used to call Wong Wong. So uh, officially from today onwards, you will become Wong Tu, yeah? <laughs> Wong Tu. Um, does it sound like any um, Chinese bad words? Ka? Wong Tu. Boleh, Okay. <laughs> yeah, I seldom uh, use a uh, uh, call Solomon, Solomon, just Wong. Okay, so I have Wong and Wong Tu. Is everyone in? Oh, Ivan is here. Are we waiting for any? Okay, the rest can. Uh, let me double check. Oh, Shark line not stable. Uh, it's okay, Shark. Uh, thank you for informing me. Later, I will share you the practice links. Yeah, like you're not in. Uh, Jonathan is in. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, but uh, in already. Okay, so I'll click start. Enjoy.
Oh, Jonathan and Nathan. Ah, is Russell trying for the second time? It's not moving. No. Yeah, it's not moving at all. This one. Okay, so I guess I can uh, remove this, Russell. Because uh, normally um, this one means um, uh, apa ni, second round, kan? Okay, so I remove this one. Ah, screen issues, okay. Okay. So I think this is Jonathan. Mm. Oh, I see screen issues. Okay, so I think everyone has completed. Okay, excellent. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, uh, let's see our oh, wow mastery. Okay, hundred percent mastered. Well done. <laughs> Okay, that's the mastery party. Okay, let's see our statistic. 82% correctly. Ah, it seems that you all are very consistent. The only batch giving me 80% uh, and above for class accuracy means uh, quality wise, you're very good. Uh, my other classes, mm, mm, getting a 60% is uh considered good okay uh -huh. oh this is wonderful the toughest question question number four let's look at question number four question number four ah fill in the blank <laughs> a process <clears throat> uh by which the browser sends information to the server this is false back right let's see who got it correct uh, of you ah uh, yeah uh, oh oh you all got this correct or perhaps uh, some of you all got the power ups okay some of you all got the power up okay events and no uh, HTTP no uh, no 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 uh, it's prospect redemption question yes <laughs> yes somehow the redemption question makes us happy right and then uh, if you get the uh, the the most suitable uh, power ups for you to use, I give us. Oh, just now I did notice that Ivan asked me question in the chat box. Uh, thanks, Noel, for uh, helping me to answer. Yeah, you just need to click on it and then activate. Uh, um, now I'm <clears throat> I'm only like uh, giving you all five uh, questions because I want to save time. But then look at the time now; it's a nine thirty. But it's okay. Um, we have uh, we have to welcome our new friends. Okay, the longest question took thirty two seconds. Oh, I thought my uh, time limit is only thirty seconds. Or oh, oh, on average, okay, I got it already. Um, the average time taken per question was nine seconds. Means um, uh, most of my question is only twenty second. Uh, so wow, less than uh, ten second. Elvin, oh Elvin is here. <laughs> oh, you just joined. Oh, okay. I noted that Elvin. So for Elvin and Shark, let me share the practice link for you. You can try it. Okay, I put in the chat box. Okay, but your attendance will be marked with late lao. Okay, Alvin. Okay, so this is the uh, share link. So I hope like um, Nathan, uh, Wong Tu and also Jeremiah, uh, you'll, you'll uh, at least learn something from uh, this uh, particular quizzes. Okay, let me exit from here. <laughs> no wonder, no wonder you're not moving just now. <laughs> Ian is not moving. <laughs> but there's a time limit though. Do, do you actually have time to refer to notes, Jonathan? 
20 seconds saja tuh. Ya, yeah, don't worry, Jonathan, because um, uh, you didn't... Ah, <laughs> use instinct, because <laughs> you can always get the, the, the answer later. Oh, for bonus points, I see. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, really cool to get into the top three, right? Um, for Jonathan, uh, because um, you you didn't attend my first three lectures, so uh, no worry. I I'm sure next week you uh, you you get the top three <laughs> competitive days out. No 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 no. I already mentioned that you you completed uh, three weeks worth of practical within half a day. Yeah, <laughs> you're very competitive. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, I think I deserve to give you, or uh, I deserve, <laughs> I, uh, y'all deserve a break. Um, I, I need to find out why, why my Google Classroom, yeah, still like this. I cannot display. Say, so cannot, oh, oh, baby. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, let's go for, um, Mm, uh, breakfast time lah. Uh, I give you only for today, fifteen minutes. Okay, fifteen minutes, and I'll be back. Hopefully, hopefully I can restart everything. See you guys, yeah.
so sorry for the delay. I've been like waiting for ages. Uh, and at the same time, I'm Googling whether Google is down, but then it seems that it's not. Uh, going into Google Calendar, Google Classroom, I, I still cannot go in into the Google uh, Classroom, but I can get into my Google Calendar, my uh, email, and through this email, I can see that, let's see, uh, Wong, Wong and Nathan, you need to accept the um, uh, meet invitation for both um lecture and also practical yeah okay because some um, everything will be uh meaning the recordings of our lecture and uh, practicals will be attached to this calendar okay uh, jeremiah i'll send you the invites as soon as possible okay at least i can uh, get into my inbox uh, okay but the rest I cannot uh, join uh, view at all. Hmm. But then uh, never mind. The time now is already nine fifty-two. Oh yeah, uh, calling Wong Tu is uh, a bit a bit uh, difficult. Let me see. Uh, how about I call you How? <laughs> uh, how? <laughs> Does it mean anything in Chinese? Well, eh? How? <laughs> okay, good. Because I have um, uh, three limbs in the other class, so I call one of them Boon. Okay. And then um, I call the other Mon, okay? even though the surname is Tan and also Lim. Okay, how? Okay, how? Okay. Pandai <laughs> pandai saja kan, I go and change people's name. Uh, yeah. Can by Jonathan because uh, I don't speak Chinese. Uh, I try to like uh, have an easy way to pronounce students' name. <laughs> Ahau. What does Ahau mean? Uh? I have Abun, I have Amon. <laughs> I simply call people as long as I can see that particular uh, words in their name. So I have Mon, I have Boon. No idea. Oh, okay. As long as it's not a bad word. Lah. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? In, uh, explain to me. Okay, let me present my screen. Uh, as you notice, since I cannot show you my Google Classroom, yeah, I, I still cannot access to my Google Classroom. I wonder why. Uh, I wonder why there's a problem. Okay, um, in your Google Classroom, I've already um, uploaded uh, Chapter 4, all on database programming. Okay, uh, let me record this um, lecture. Um, there are three parts, part one, part two, part three. But um, if you look at the um, our weekly course plan, um, we need like three weeks to cover it. <clears throat> but what I will do is I will combine part two and part three next week. Because um, part two is quite short. Okay, so I think I can do that um, so long as um, you all can get your uh, uh, get your assignment going. Now we have, uh, let me see, uh, eight. Uh, initially we have eight, uh, and then we have Nathan, we have How, uh, and then I, uh, we have Jeremiah, so 11. So uh, 14, did I miss anyone? So I think we need to um, uh, finalize the grouping. Uh, let's finalize the grouping next week now. Okay, because um, this week is the final uh, final week for the um, student registration, okay? Now, um, that is about the database programming. I'll split it into two weeks um, today and also next week. And for tomorrow's practical, um, in fact, there's only one uh, demo exercise. 
Okay, I've already uploaded it to the uh, Google Classroom as well. One demo exercise, and that demo exercise, in fact, uh, covers the uh, third part. Yeah, uh, the third part of our um, database programming, which is on data bound control. Uh, but then it's okay since uh, I have already recorded the demo videos. It's a step by step. I believe you all can do it. Uh, even though we won't cover chapter four, part three today. Okay, so let me go back to my slide. Okay, this is what we're going to cover in this part one. Um, as always, we must start with the overall uh, concept. Okay, um, this time our concept is on data driven web page. Uh, before this, we have um, chapter one, we start off with the static versus dynamic web page. Okay, and then after that, uh, we look at the um, event driven, uh, event driven programming. All right, and then um, we have this um, uh, for database programming, all about data driven web page. Um, if you look at your assignment requirements, you need to develop a dynamic, uh, what was it, dynamic data driven uh, website. Uh, web application. So by um, learning this uh, data for uh, database programming, I think overall you should be able to do the first part of your assignment ready, the prototype. Okay. Um, look at the next one. You will be introduced to ADO.net. ADO stands for A is ASP.net and then data objects, ASP.net data objects. And then um, we have names, uh, database namespaces. Uh, namespaces is uh, just like our, um, in C, we have the uh, libraries like standard io.h, standard library.h, where we must include this into our codes uh, our program uh, or program. And then for Java, we have packages. So in ASP.NET, we have namespaces. I remember uh, last week when I checked the practical tree, Russell, in your course, you, you have um, namespaces, okay? You, 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 you use, um, you have this already, okay? For today, we concentrate on the database namespaces. And then um, towards the end of our chapter, we look at the, what are the issues in data-driven page? Um, but then, in fact, we are focusing on SQL injection. I'm sure you all um, uh, will be able to remember your uh, database, uh, whatever that you have learned under Miss Tang. Okay. Um, and then for PHP, okay, web system, web system technology, I remembered I touched this on the uh, SQL injection for Wong's batch, okay, we have covered this SQL injection, um, but I'm not sure about Russell and Jonathan, your web system technologies, um, did you all cover um, this particular topic, SQ, uh, SQL injection? Okay, um, and then um, parameterized query method, okay, this is similar to, uh, for those who have learned uh, GUI and web application using Java, um, it's similar, okay, parameterized query method. Um, and then um, for this particular chapter, we will have just a preview on the CRUD, okay, create, retrieve, update, and delete, because um, in fact, um, we'll just concentrate on retrieve, the retrieve part uh, first, uh, okay? The CUD, create, update, and delete will be covered in the uh, next part. Now, um, what are the advantages for data-driven web page? Uh, in fact, I cannot imagine uh, any application without a database, okay? Uh, for us as a, uh, the, um, as students or perhaps people involved in software development, uh, we need database, 
okay um for web application it's not even complete without database so um if our web pages um we make use of database or any other sources of data we can um convert or turn our static web pages into not only a dynamic uh, web pages but also dynamic um, data driven web pages so we have several advantages what we can see here is maintainability and then reusability um, reusability because uh, we keep everything in our database so uh, we can do backup we can do restore okay and then um, let's go to the next slide um, we have the relationships okay when we create our database we, we have these relationships that we can use to join um, related entities together okay we have business rules so um, everything will be in the context of our data right um, in terms of quality and timeliness of content um, we already know that uh, when we have databases uh you compare to um normally the introduction for a database course is to compare a database with um non-database uh, application right so we already know that databases they are optimized already okay optimized for what for storage and retrieval of data so the the performance of retrieving our data to store the data is there already okay um we can update information on our live website um most of the time in real time now um on the other hand okay on the other hand what are the disadvantages yes the development time but then uh, who are you guys you we have you okay that's why we have a uh, web app developers this 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 is your job okay you um if you're hired as a web app developer um uh, you get money okay you are being paid to do this so i i don't really uh, say that um, it is in fact a disadvantage but since we are comparing a static web page versus a dynamic web page or perhaps a dynamic web page versus a dynamic data driven web page so we can say that um, if we go for a dynamic data driven web page um, the development time will be much more longer so we can um, view this disadvantage from that point of view okay and then ah okay i i didn't uh, actually think about i thought about the second one dependency on the database um if your database fail for some reason the whole website will fail Hmm. Okay, so that's one thing that we need to consider, right? And then there's uh, two more disadvantages here: the database round trip. Yes, um, uh, even though there's a round trip between uh, the client and server, which might uh, result in a slight reduction in performance, but the thing is, um. Let me go back to the previous slide. Um, the databases now are optimized, okay, for storage and retrieval of data. Just that there's a slight um, decrease in performance for this uh, round trip between client and server. Um, perhaps you all still remember when we learned um, in the, our previous chapter uh, when a user requests a dynamic page okay um the web server um in this case if they want to re uh, request for data from a database then the web server must first make request to the database for the necessary data and then the web server has uh, to wait for the data to arrive before it can assemble and send the page to the uh, user so um, this is like um a slight reduction in performance because of the waiting time okay web server to the uh, database you get the data and then assemble send the page to the user okay and another disadvantage is cost 
um, quite expensive for a full enterprise level database solution. Okay, so these are some of the um, advantages and disadvantages for a dynamic uh, data driven web pages. Okay, let's go to the next slide. How does the website get the data? In fact, just now already uh, explained a bit, right? So look at the steps here. Um, the first step, uh, we need a page, okay? The client, the uh, client browser uh, requests a page and that particular page requires data for content. Like say, uh, you want to display the customer record in a grid view control. So you need to have the customer uh, records displayed on that particular page. Okay, so what happened is that um, the page will attempt to create connection to the data source and um, provide logins as uh, login details as required. Remember, um, we don't simply allow um, outsiders to access into our uh, data source. So this is where um, the database um, will sort of like check, okay, do you have the access or not? Okay, and uh, everything is okay, connection is formed, right? And then over here in step two, the page will build and send a query. So once we have the connection, remember, uh, if we want to retrieve data, the first thing is we need to, um, what do you call that? Uh, open, ah, okay, connect to the database. We need to have a connection open for the database. Um, here, the next step is for the query. I'm sure you all still remember your query, the select query for retrieve, and then uh, for create, update, and delete, we have insert, uh, uh, SQL query, what else, insert, update, and also delete, okay? So the database will return the requested data based on the query that is sent, okay? And then look at the final step, the page received the data, and reacts accordingly. So if you are using a grid view control to display the data, then it will be displayed accordingly, right? Um, so you can see that this is the part where, um, let me show you, the database round trip um, being mentioned here. The round trip between client and server means a slight reduction in the performance. Initially, if you don't have um, the page that's in request for data, there's no need to go through this part. Okay, so the uh, between the client and um, server is just this part, right? Now, um, let's look at the ADO. Okay, so ADO is ASP.NET Data Objects. Um, you have seen this diagram in our chapter one, and then our database is right here, okay, in the middle, right here in the middle. Okay, it is a part of the base class library included in our Microsoft.NET framework. Okay, let's uh, go straight to this particular slide. So what are they? Okay, ADO, okay, what are ASP.NET data objects? These are software components uh, where we use it to access the data and also data services. Normally, um, it is used for relational database. Um, I'm sure you all know what does uh, RDBMS means, okay, relational database management system. But um, uh, for ADO, it can also be used to access a non-relational database, right? And if we go for history, okay, um, the ADO.NET data services has been renamed as Astoria or WCF data services in 2009. Okay, WCF data, uh, WCF stands for Windows Communication Foundation. Just a little bit of history there. Okay, next is the namespaces. Okay, namespaces. Um, just now already mentioned a bit uh, what are namespaces. Namespaces, uh, these are the classes, all right? 
So um, like Java, we have packages, uh, like C, we have the uh, libraries, right? Okay, so um, for .NET framework, um, if you want to deal with this um, um, database, okay, SP.NET data objects, we have several namespaces uh, solely for the purpose of database access, okay? Um, for Microsoft, okay, um, they have created separate namespaces optimized for different data providers. Different data providers means different types of databases. Okay, um, so why we need to have these separate namespaces? Um, here, um, a namespace um, basically uh, uniquely identifies a set of names so that there is no ambiguity when uh, objects having different origin but the same names are mixed together so that we can differentiate which one is which. Um, I add in this example, okay, uh, say we have um, this uh, identifier, both are text box, correct? Same identifier, but then they have different namespace, okay? Um, the first one is from system windows controls, and the second one is from system web UI web controls, okay? So um, we have several namespaces for database access. So let's take a look at what are the available namespaces under this um, ADO, okay, ASP.NET data objects. The first one is we have system data, SQL client. Um, what do we have here would be the classes to connect to Microsoft SQL Server, okay? And then um, to connect to um, uh, database such as Microsoft Access, then we have this namespace system.data or DB. And then for database with a ODBC driver, then we have this namespace system.data.odbc. And then for connecting to this uh, Oracle database server, we have this namespace system.data.oracle client. So you can see here um, we have uh, separate namespaces, okay? Namespaces means um, uh, it has uh, dozens of classes uh, uh, optimized for working with different data providers, different type of databases, okay? For Microsoft SQL Server, for um, Microsoft Access, for ODBC uh, database, and then this one is for Oracle. I believe you all learn um, Oracle under Miss Tang. Okay, and then we also have system data SQL Server CE. This is for uh, the SQL Server Compact Edition. CE stands for Compact Edition. Um, you can see it clearly here in this diagram um, that uh, for ADO.net, remember, it has separate namespaces uh, that allows you to uh, deal with different types of databases accordingly, all right? So for our practical, um, we'll be using this one, okay, the Microsoft SQL Server, not this MySQL, this is an open source, right? Mm, so what are the common data classes available. Okay, um, for ADO.net, there are several classes. Okay, um, first of all, we need the connection object. Okay, this is um, um, very clear cut. We, we cannot, uh, if you look at this diagram, we cannot uh, access our data if we do not have this connection form first. Okay, so the first thing that we need is the uh, data connection object. This is for us to communicate with our data source. Um, next, we need the command object because um, this is where we, we need to perform some query, right? Okay, so we'll use this common object to perform some action on our data source, uh, the CRUD operation, uh, create, retrieve, update, delete. So you can see here, okay, reading is retrieved. 
okay, updating or deleting relational data. And then we have data adapter object. Um, this is something like um, a, a middle a person, a bridge uh, that can be used to transfer data between a data source and a data set object. Okay, and then uh, continue on, we have data reader object. Um, why do we need this data reader object? Let's see. Um, data adapter is to transfer data between our data source and the data set. Then for data reader, okay, I've highlighted this one. Um, we use it to efficiently process a large list of results. Okay, a large list of results. If we want to process a large list of results, um, one record at a time, we need a data reader object. Okay, one thing that you need to know is that a data reader object, um, it uh, process one record at a time, and then it is accessed in a read-only, forward-only mode. So meaning the records uh, have to be accessed in sequential order, means um, next, 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 forward-only. Um, it cannot be accessed randomly, uh, and then we cannot go back to the previous record. So um, take note if you're using a data reader object. And then um, parameter object. Okay, if you look at the description, describe a single parameter to a command. So normally we use this together with the previous, yes, this one, the command object. Okay, um, when we want to do updating, uh, we want to add in a parameter because some, when we want to update, definitely we don't update the whole thing, right? So you need to add in some um, parameter. So um, we need a parameter object. Okay, so um, in this particular diagram, it shows you a way uh, in which step we will be using these um, objects. Okay, so you can see here, um, when we want to create connection to our data source, this is where we use the connection object. Uh, okay, and then when we want to uh, perform query, okay, this is where we use both command and parameter objects, right? And then uh, when we receive the data and then um, say uh, we want to uh, format the data for display, okay, this is where we can use the uh, data reader and also the data adapter object. All right. So, um, so far, these are the common data classes under ATO.net. Uh, there's uh, one more um, not listed, but we can see in this diagram, uh, there's also the exception, okay, the exception object. Um, in case there's something wrong on the database side, then the exception will be raised to inform us. Okay, let's see, uh, we have question here. Okay, we have question. Let's see whether you can answer this or not. Um, the question is, so just now we have gone through a list of objects, okay, uh, data objects. Um, we have connection object, common object, parameter object, data reader object. Um, and then we have one, two, three, four different scenario. Okay, so you need to uh, tell me um, what are the data objects required required for each of these situations. A search engine page, uh, what do we need? Which object do we need for a search engine page? Assuming that uh, this is a search engine page, what are the data objects that we need? Okay, let me give you a hint. There's a hint already. As long as you need to like have a data-driven web page, the first thing that you need is connection okay so uh, you can take down this answer a search engine page definitely you need a connection object what else when you do a search you need to have query right so for query what do you need command 
All right. So we need a connection, a common object, and normally um, we have parameter objects as well because parameter works together with this uh, command. So uh, we have three data objects are required for a search engine page. Next, um, how about the results of the search? Mm. So uh, do we need any additional uh, data objects here for a search engine? I believe yes. Do you know why? Let's go back. Uh, a data reader object. Uh, we use it to efficiently process a large list of results. So a search. Okay, so if it is a search engine page, definitely you need uh, four data objects. Okay, so these are the answer. Connection object, command, parameter, and data reader. How about a login page? How about a login page? Definitely we need a connection, correct? Command parameter, yes, correct. Do we need a data reader? What's your opinion? Let's see if I... <laughs> yeah. Uh, data reader perlu because um, say I want to log into my uh, Google account. How many Google accounts then need to check against? Ah, correct. Okay. So, perlu ah. Uh, let's see. So, if we uh, look at number two, it's similar to number one. So, we need all four. Connection object, command and parameter object as well as data reader. Okay. Let's move on to the third question. A page that allows you to add a new product details. Uh, add a new product details means one record. <laughs> so all three data objects except for the data reader because some um, there's no need for us to like uh, uh, where is it to process large list of results can. Uh, we just need to add one uh, data, one uh, project products detail. Okay, how about number four? A page that allows you to edit your personal detail means only your record. Same thing, Sa the same thing with number three. Uh, uh, all data objects except for data reader. Okay, that's good. Um, let me see my chat box. Okay all caught up okay a little bit more which data type to use mm, which data type to use uh, i know you have um, been um, exposed to uh, this when you learn a uh, database okay a uh, bit char and char that time so let's look at these three data types first this is the sql data type so we use the big data type to store zero and one okay boolean and then uh, we use char or character to store a student's registration number a uh, char and char um it's for it's meant for a fixed length text Okay, so uh, what happened when you store a text that is shorter than the uh, defined length, then it will be padded with spaces. Uh, okay, and then the third example, and char, uh, you can use it to store a Chinese character in fixed length because um, and char will store data in Unicode format. So it's suitable for uh, storing data in uh, foreign languages. Okay. Now, next we have decimal, float, and image. Okay, now decimal storage size is 17 bytes. Okay, um, and then um, we have, uh, normally we use this decimal for a fixed precision and scale numeric data. Now, precision is the number of digits in a number. Okay, number of digits. So, if we have uh 100 
100. That is a precision history. Okay, what if I have a decimal? Should we include that? Uh, yes. Okay, so you can see the example given here. A decimal 5, 2. 5 if is the precision. 2 is the scale. So um, if you enter 123, okay, and your data type is decimal with uh, 5 precision of 5 and scale of 2, um, in your database, it will be stored as 1, 2, 3, okay, point zero, zero. Um, Remember, the precision is the number of digits in a number, excluding the uh, decimal point. Yeah? So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, there are 5 digits. And what is scale? Scale is the number of digits to the right of the decimal point. So scale O2, that's why you have uh, two decimal places here. Okay, how about float? Uh, for the float, precision is up to 15. All right. And then as for the image data type, um, this will be obsolete. Uh, or perhaps it's already obsolete. So we are going to avoid using this. Okay, how about numbers? So we have big int. Uh, we have int. Um, we have um, small int and also tiny int. Look at the storage sizes. Okay, big int is up to 8 bytes. Okay, compare this with decimal is uh, 17 bytes. For float, the uh, storage size is 8 bytes. Mm. So you can see that decimal, uh, we can store large fractional numbers. Okay, back to here. And tiny int is one byte only uh, from 0 to 255. Okay, so the explanation is given here. Um, there's a question. In fact, I've already added this in my Google Classroom uh, as a class activity question. What data type would you use to store Bill Gates' net worth income in 2021? <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can access my Google Classroom. Just now I wasn't able to, I need to, oh, Masita Bole. Or perhaps I can uh, use my phone. Let's see, Google Classroom. Well, y'all are um, searching for, <laughs> and how, uh, you need, before you give suggestion, you need to find what is his net worth first in 2021. Um, I read a news recently that he he divorced from his wife. So um, I, I'm, I wonder how much, one to nine billion. Mm, let's see. Net income. Uh, perhaps, uh, oh yeah, you're correct. As uh, I Google on the 8th of July, yeah, 1 to 9 billion. How many zeros are required for a billion? Okay, I'm in my Google Classroom app. Okay, I have my question in class activity. Let me see. All student question is what data type would you use to store Bill Gates net worth income? You may include a website link or YouTube video. Uh, due date, I will set uh, today as our due date. And this is a question. So you can edit your answer. You can reply to each other. Okay, so let me click ask. Okay. Oh. I can use my app, but I cannot <laughs> uh, use my web browser here. I wonder what's wrong. Can anyone find out what's wrong with my Google Classroom, my Google Calendar? At least I can open my Google Meet. Okay, um, the class activity question is already posted. Okay, and you can answer it anytime today. Now, 
um, what's the time now? The time now is 10 30. Uh, our class is until 11, right? Uh, let's go for a short, a very short break. Okay, three minutes break, and uh, I'll try to speed things up. Okay, three minutes break. Three minutes only, and I'll be back. And so I'm back. I hope y'all uh, answering. Let me check this in my classroom app. Let's see. Oh, Daniel and Russell, and also Ivan already answered. Okay, let I go and check it. As for the HTML events, um, you all can view your um, Google Classroom here. Yeah? I'm now in the class activity question. Uh, Kelvin, for the HTML events, your, your answer is on click for the button. Uh, can you give another answer besides on click? And then for Daniel, uh, your answer is on display date. Mm, display date is a JavaScript function. Uh, this is a custom JavaScript function. It's, it's a JavaScript function, not a HTML event. Or someone is trying to talk, is it? Uh, what do you mean, change uh, can you suggest um, other HTML event besides on-click event? Oh. Because I, um, if you refer to my attachment, can Kelvin, I my example is on on-click event. Mm. Okay. 
Okay, so that's it. Checkbox uh, um, for, for our new students, including Jeremiah, after you all have uh, watched the recordings for chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, uh, go to the Google Classroom uh, and the class activity questions. Uh, go ahead and answer the questions, yeah? Um, uh, how Jonathan and Nathan missing, missing, missing. It's okay. I'll take your time to um, catch up with the uh, chapters. Okay, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And uh, what I like about this class activity question is that it's a question, it's not an assignment in Google Classroom, it means student can uh, edit their answer, they can like uh, check each other answer, you, you all can reply to each other. Okay. Now, um, let me get back to our lecture. Okay, I'll start the recording. Too bad my Google is not working. Hmm. Okay, so it's recorded already. Let's continue with our chapter four. Okay, uh, right. Now, um, just to remind you all, okay, I put up a question just now. Uh, what data type would you use to store Bill Gates' net worth in 2021? So um, just to remind you all, selecting the appropriate data type uh, will really help your database to function more correctly. Okay, because if it's too large, the data type um, that you suggest is too large, you're wasting space. Okay, uh, if it's too small of the data type, we call it as artificial ceiling. It means, uh, say, you have a float, and for a float, it has fixed precision. What does it mean? It means you cannot store the number as big as you want, and then you may lose the precise information that you need. Okay, uh, for example, um, if you have like a 0 0.123456, it may be stored as 0 0.12345. Okay, uh, depending on the precision and also the, uh, yeah, the precision that you use. Another example would be like infinite division, like one divide by three. So you get 0 0.3333333. Okay, so it depends on which data type you use to return a number with a certain precision. Okay, so the bigger the information it stores, the more memory is consumed. Okay, that is uh, what you need to remember when you want to set up your um, database. Okay, and then what happens if you suggest uh, incorrect data type, then uh, you need to perform data type conversion, okay? It can also um, cause your reporting to be more difficult, for example, like zip code and also money. So money, we, we do need um, precision and scale. Zip code is a number, but we do not use it uh, in calculation. The size is fixed. Correct. So, um, pay more uh, consideration in selecting the data type that you want to use. Okay. So we're done with the data type. Next, mm -hmm. connecting to database in uh, ASP.NET. Um, you will see this tomorrow uh, for uh, my demo video. Okay. Um, a simple way is to use data source controls. Okay, so for our, I uh, will use uh, Microsoft Visual Studio, right? For Microsoft Visual Studio, um, the one that we are using is the SQL data source, okay? SQL data source, we'll use the data source control um, in connecting to our database. Um, we're going to use the uh, Microsoft SQL Server database. Um, the extension is .mdf. All right, and then um, we need to also use uh, cell, uh, some data bound controls. So what we have here, uh, these are the examples of data bound controls, very nicely um, 
uh, available for us uh, for tomorrow, you'll be using bridge view and also details view. Okay, so now um, what are these data source control? Okay, data source control, um, we use it for accessing and also modifying our data. So it's something like a declarative approach. Uh, what I like about using this um, data source control, um, yes, uh, last night I, I tried this SQL data source. Um, yes, I really agree with the second bullet, rich capabilities, very rich capabilities. Um, I'm very thankful that I get to teach this uh, web application development okay, using SP.NET. Um, indeed, using a framework really help a lot. Okay, So rich capabilities for what? Uh, for retrieving and modifying data. So this includes querying, sorting, paging, filtering, updating, deleting, and inserting. Everything is here. That's why here the keyword is rich, okay, rich capabilities. Uh, what does it mean? We have all these capabilities to do all these tasks. So look at the third one. We can work with data without having to write a lack of data access code. So last night when I, I recorded my demo videos, I didn't even type uh, 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 any code. I just do a click, click, click. Okay, that's it. So very rich capability. So I hope you all enjoy doing the uh, practical uh, tomorrow. Okay, um, this is uh, shown in the previous uh, slide. Uh, some of the built-in data source control and the one that you're using is this one, uh, SQL data source. Just an uh, info that the SQL in the control name, SQL data source, SQL here doesn't refer to the Microsoft SQL server, but uh, referring to the SQL syntax for querying the relational databases. Um, we, uh, for our practical, we use some um, the Microsoft SQL Server database. Okay, but uh, remember, we can also use this uh, data source control for Microsoft Access, for Oracle, and any other OLEDB or ODBC compliant data store. Now, how to connect to a database? Um, you can see that. Uh, if you use the data source control, everything is very easy, very rich capability available for us to do all this. Okay, but um, you still need to know the code behind, all right, the code behind, especially when you need to like customize, okay, do some customization, at least you understand uh, what's happening. Okay, so if you take a look at this particular method called read order data, um, the parameter is connection string. So you can see that uh, this is the query, select query from this particular table. And then I'm using, um, this is um, the namespace. Okay, uh, the keyword is not placed outside of this particular method. Okay, so that's why the keyword using is here. Uh, first of all, we need a connection first, correct? So to connect, um, let me go back whether you still remember ah, this one. First, we need to use the connection object, okay, from the connection and then uh, to perform the query, we need our command and also parameter object. Yeah, this is uh, what we are doing in this particular method. Let me go back. Mm -hmm. So we uh, have created the connection object. Now we are creating the command object by supplying our query, which is this one, the select query, and pass in our connection object. Then we open our connection. And then um, for, for retrieving, okay, for retrieving, we'll use the data reader object. And then look at the... Uh, method that we use execute reader. Okay, we are using execute reader. Now, um, let's go to this particular namespace. Uh, we have uh, the following classes under system.data.sql client. So, this is the first one. We need this class to open our database. 
okay, a database connection and we need this SQL command to execute our SQL statement. Okay, and then we need the SQL parameter whenever we want to pass a parameter value. For some, um, we, we, most of the time, we are not like trying to retrieve all the records from our database. Okay, perhaps a, a certain records only so we can uh, use the parameter to limit the number of rows retrieved by our select statement. And then um, we have seen this one, okay, data reader, uh, the efficient way to read the rows in a result set, and then data adapter. This is to link between a database and data set. So you can refer to the previous slide. Um, it's uh, the same, in fact, just that this is the actual um, namespace, okay, uh, for uh, uh, not namespace actual classes under the system data SQL client namespace. Okay, so um, the common database tasks uh, that we can use using the ADO.NET data objects. Uh, first of all, we can create a database connection. We can open a database connection. Uh, so CRUD, create, retrieve, update, delete. Okay, so these are the common database tasks. Okay, um, the connection string, okay, will be stored in our web.config file. Mm, wow, do you need to memorize all this? Uh, no, no need, because um, if we use the data source control just now, um, for example, SQL data source control, uh, you just do a few clicks, and then the web.config will be added uh, for you automatically. But um, again, as a developer, you need to understand the code behind. So in your web.config, okay, within this configuration element, um, you need to add in your connection string right before your system.web. So um, what do we have in the connection string? The name. Okay, and then the, uh, you need to specify your data source. Okay, it's a local database. Okay, and then here is the name of the database, authors.mdf. So the name of database is authors. And then uh, notice that the integrated security is set to true. And here the provider is system.data.sql client. Okay, let me see. Mm, uh, in case you are overwhelmed with all these codes, uh, let me show you my Visual Studio. Mm, practical for. Oopsie. Okay, ah, so uh, if you use your, let me see. Okay, so you just need to uh, drag your SQL data source, okay, and then um, that will be in your toolbox, okay, not in your standard but in your data, okay? So this is from where you, you see our slide just now. We have the SQL data source, and then uh, at the top here would be the data bound control. So here we are using a, a grid view, okay? So you can see, uh, you can like um, look inside the smart tag. You just need to configure, that's it, okay? So after you're done, right? Uh, here you will be able to see web.config. This is the web.config. I didn't even touch this file last night. Um, all added for me. Okay, so we can see that this is the connection string. Okay, placed right before the system.web. Um, so I set the connection string and then I have all this. 
It's a local database. Okay, we are using Northwind.mdf integrated security set to true. Everything is given to us. Okay, just for your information. But um, remember, we still need to know the code behind uh, which, uh, in case you need to do any customization in the future. Okay, the time now is 10.50. I have 10 more minutes, right? Okay. Um, here we can secure the connection string using encryption, um, which you can see that here. All right. Security equals to true. Um, a question. Discuss another advantage of storing the connection string in the web.config file. Okay. Um, here, the, the answer would be we can easily change the server name, uh, the database name, or the authentication information without going uh, to each individual web pages uh, and edit from there. Just now, I already show you my web.config, right? Everything is there. So, you, if you understand what are these, you can easily change your database name, all right? Okay, and also the provider name and so on. Okay, so this is another advantage of storing the connection in web.config. Um, how about the other uh, data source provider? Okay, so you can always Google for the connection string. Okay, now um, to retrieve, okay, um, just now for the common database task, we already look at um, the database connection. Okay, for part one, we just focus on this one: retrieve and display database records. CUD cut will be covered in the next lecture. Okay, so what are the four steps? Okay, open, create open database connection, and for retrieve, we must create our select statement and also the SQL command. Then we execute the command to retrieve our records. And finally, we display the results of the query. So these are the four steps. And the last one here, definitely, uh, whatever you open, you must close up. Okay, close the database connection. Now, let's uh, look at the first step. To create and open a database connection, um, we use the system data SQL client namespace. All right, we place the connection string on the web form. So this is the connection object. Okay, remember, if you remember, it looks similar to what we have here. Okay, in the web.config, it looks similar. All right, so this is the first method. We place the connection string on our web form in our .aspx file. Okay, another method is we place the connection string in the web.config, uh, which you have seen just now. So um, here, this is similar, all right? Uh, configuration manager dot connection string is similar to the configuration element in the web.config, all right? The connection string is similar to this in web.config. Uh, and finally, our connection string equals to da, 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 will is similar to what we have in the web.config. So you can either place it in your web form or you place it in the web.config. But remember, uh, there is, there's an advantage of storing the connection string in web.config file rather than in the individual web pages. Because we just go to web.config, uh, we can easily change um, our setting, like the server name, database, or any authentication information. Okay. Uh, the next step is, uh, yeah, open a database, then we use the open method connection dot open so to close its close method now um the select statement uh, this is the select statement i'm really sure you'll still remember your select statement select what column what column from what table what table where okay that is your condition uh example is given here mm. uh yeah coincidentally i have two wongs in the class 
um, string select select first name last name from the students table where the last name is equal to one then i get if our our, our web application development uh, student record is being used then it will retrieve the two ones record okay and remember um, for the second step uh, we need to have the common object as well yeah so to create the common object um, we need to pass in these two particular parameter so this is our query and this is our connection all right and step number three execute the command if you execute the command um, there are two methods if you want to return one or more records then you use you can use the data reader okay we use the sql data reader to temporarily store the records okay and remember from our previous slide data reader is a forward only process one single record it's just next 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 there's no going back because there's uh, no property it uh, to go back to the previous record and look at the last one it doesn't have a property that returns a count of records now um, if you want to fetch the next record in the stream um, you need a loop okay look at the example here you create this data reader object so while there's a next record Okay, uh, you need to uh, call the read method, then you retrieve the uh, particular, say you want to retrieve the last name and first name. So you need a while loop. Okay. There's also a has rows uh, property. Has row property is a little bit different. Uh, it is different from the read method read method is to fetch the next record and we use it in a while statement for has row is it is uh, just a checking a true or false checking whether there's any row return um, has row it is returning uh, true false any record then we will do something else uh, then if you look at this example no records retrieved Okay, so just a checking, that's why it doesn't advance to uh, the next row. Okay, to execute command, um, the second method, if you only want to return one data, you can use a variable. Okay, so you can use a variable, um, say for example, you want to retrieve a user's password. So it's a single value. So you can, um, in this case, uh, for SQL Server, we have several functions such as the count, okay, the sum, average, mean, and max. I'm sure you are familiar with this SQL statement. So there are two methods. Um, whether you want to return one or more records, or you only want to return one data, okay? And then for our next method we need to use execute scalar okay execute scalar um, to return the value of the first column of the first row written by a query so let's look at the example here okay oh one minute left uh, let me uh, proceed okay we are almost done um, here, this is the select query, right? Select the count from this product table, right? And then we create this a command object by passing in these two parameter, your query and your connection object. And notice that if you use execute scalar, it returns a value, okay? The value of the first column of the first row. So um, here, you store it into a integer variable and then um, remember that execute scalar returns an object type not an integer but then since you are selecting the count it's an integer right so here you need to do um, the casting okay casting because execute scalar returns an object now so what's the problem potential problem in this code 
here, uh, look at the query. Select all from the students table where username is Eric Tan. And then you use execute scalar. Okay. You store in this particular variable data type is object. Oh, which is, yes, correct. Because this method returns object type. So far, so good, right? Mm -hmm. However, if you look here, this is an object, right? And then you're trying to convert it into string. So what seems to be a problem here? Anyone have any uh, idea? Uh, data type. Data type. Yeah. Something about the data itself, because um, if you look closely, if you look closely, the data returned from this uh, execution of this uh, statement may not be the password only because we are selecting all. Ah, as the select statement selected the whole record. So this part will not work. Okay, this part will not work at all. So you need to be very careful with execute Scala. Okay, very good. Let's see. I think I will stop here. Okay, and I'll continue this in my next class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Technical problem today. Uh, otherwise, I won't. Uh, I will be able to finish this. What's the next? Uh, when is your next class, by the way? Uh, Twelve. 12 so you need to go for your math time already so i'll see y'all um tomorrow bye bye ah uh, okay you can stay after this yeah elvin okay you can stay after this or perhaps tomorrow because you need to go for your makan uh, welcome noel okay bye bye